All right, today we're going to be talking about optic disc drusen. These drusen are different than the retinal drusen that we see in age-related macular degeneration, which has nothing to do with these drusen. They both have the same word, however, and it means like a rock or a crystal in German, drus. And so these rocks of calcium and other debris, axoplasmic debris, can appear inside your optic nerve. And when they do that, it can cause an optic neuropathy. So here your optic nerve is and it has the rocks in it. And sometimes those rocks are visible because they're on the surface. And so usually the visible optic distrusion are no problem to make the diagnosis. And you don't need to do any tests on the person. Some people believe that we should treat the intraocular pressure if it's elevated or they're ocular hypertensive because it's gonna be hard to tell glaucomatous type cupping in this. And the field defect of distrusion and glaucoma look very similar. So the field defects in optic disc head drusen and in glaucoma tend to respect the horizontal meridian. The inferior nasal step is a super common type of visual field defect, but it can be arcuate in shape or it can be nerve fiber layer of any kind of distribution. What it doesn't usually do is it usually spares the center. So the papillomacula bundle usually is spared in patients with distrusion, just like glaucoma. And when you have distrusion that are visible, it's not a problem. It's when it's invisible to you because it's underneath. So the buried distrusion are the ones that look like papilledema. And so we're going to be looking for the distinctive and obligatory signs of papilledema in any patient who has an elevated disc. And if we see the obligatory signs, then we're not going to be thinking about drusen. So the obligatory signs in papilledema are when you have obscuration of the nerve fiber layer, and that's on the surface rather than deep. So if we can see through the nerve fiber layer and see the vessels clearly, and if there's pigmentary change under the vessels, then that's going to be pseudopapilledema. But if we see the obscuration is in the nerve fiber layer and obscuring the blood vessel, that's going to be more suggestive that it's true disc edema. The other things that are obligatory signs that you're dealing with true papilledema are pathologic signs like hemorrhage, exudate, subretinal fluid. If we see those obligatory signs, then we're going to be leaning towards true papilledema or other causes of disc edema and away from distrusion. Now, what if you don't have any obligatory signs and you're still worried it's papilledema? Well, then you have to do ancillary testing, and the testing that we normally are going to rely upon is ultrasound, and ultrasound is going to be looking for the calcifications that are in the, the drusen themselves, but it's only helpful if it's positive. So if it's negative, about half the drusen are not calcified and we cannot see them on ultrasound. We also pair that with a 30 degree test where we're looking at the fluid in the sheath and by moving the eye 30 degrees into eccentric fixation, the fluid kind of pushes out of the nerve. And so we can tell if there's fluid in the sheath and there are a number of ultrasound criteria for determining fluid in the sheath. And you can use OCT and on OCT, we can see the elevation uh, in the disc head itself. Usually it's hypo reflected with a hyper reflective rim around it. And we're gonna be looking for the obligatory signs again, the subretinal fluid, if we see that, uh, we probably shouldn't be making the diagnosis of drusen. OCT is getting better and better, uh, but it's not 100% sensitive or specific. Neither, none of these tests are. And fluorescein angiogram, fundus fluorescein angiogram, probably is the best test because when we have true disc edema, there's gonna be hyperfluorescence from leakage of the disc. And that leakage represents the breakdown of the blood brain barrier. And so there are plenty of papers that are comparing these three modalities, fluorescein against OCT and ultrasound. In our clinic, ultrasound uh, works best if we see the calcification or we see the fluid in the sheath, that's probably good enough. OCT is kind of an adjunctive one. It helps establish the thickening and a baseline in a quantitative matter. And we're going to be looking for that hypo-reflective uh, drusen with a hyper-reflective uh, rim. And then if we're still unsure, we're gonna do fluorescein angiogram to make sure there's no leakage. So you need to know a little bit about distrusion. It causes peripheral field loss, not central loss. It's slowly progressive, it's benign, it doesn't need imaging. If you see obligatory signs of papilledema, then you should work that up. If you're unsure, you should work it up as papilledema. Ultrasound, OCT, and fundus fluorescein are all adjunctive tests that help us differentiate these different uh, conditions from true papilledema.